So we're gonna take a little break from uh, firing up this engine to show you guys underneath this car. There's many YouTube commenters that say that the car is left outside for any period of time, the frame turns to mush. And I argue that, sure, in other states maybe, but in Texas, that's not the case. So I'm gonna show you up underneath here. We're gonna go from the frame front to back. We're gonna look at it. I'm gonna show you guys. This one is really nice. That's about as solid as you can ever expect a piece of metal from 1972 to look. Even if it was sitting close to the ground, it's in really, really good shape. It's all surface rust. There's no structural rust at all down both sides. You can see even the seatbelt plates are in good shape. Here's the autocross member. Also in good shape. I've seen rusty cars that they like to rust around where the uh, spring pockets go. None of the uh, control arm mounts are ripped off. They look really good. Um, surface rust, as always, to be expected. The uh, mount for the power steering is not broken or cracked. Again, there's plenty of surface rust. Which for a car this old is totally normal. But no rust in the frame at all. The one part that does have rust is this muffler. This is not the way to put mufflers because all the condensation just collects in this bottom and it rusts out. But it makes your car sound really good. <laughs> so there is that. Here the back of the frame is in really, really good shape. All the brackets are there. I don't think this rear clip has ever been damaged other than the cow damage. But there's no obvious fiberglass repairs in the back. There's still marks from the factory. Look at these bushings. And a spider. Yeah, we're gonna have to replace those when we do the brakes, I think. These have been replaced before. These aren't factory spring or factory spring bolts. The spring is also not factory. This is an aftermarket. I don't see any stickers on it, but it does have a 320 on one end. The top. The top doesn't have any stickers on it either. So, but yeah, it's very original back here. It looks like at one point the calipers, shocks, and rubber hoses were all replaced. <laughs> and then it got left in the field. So just back in the di rear diff, we have new spring, new spring bolts and pads, calipers, and lines that all went to crap because it sat in a field. And shocks. The shocks are probably still open. Here in the front, of course, original power steering stuff that probably leaks, haven't gotten that far yet. Um, new calipers, new lines, and new shocks before it was parked. Radiator support looks good. All this front stuff usually, I mean, it's usually more cr crispy than the rest of it just because it's in the front, but it's not bad. It, I've seen better, but I've also seen worse. It's had ball joints replaced. That top one's original. Uh, let's go on this side. It's had lowers but not uppers at one point. So here's the main thing we're going to focus on today. Is we're going to look at this transmission. Now, normally transmissions don't leak water into them because there's hoods on cars, but I'm just not going to take a chance on this one. And since it has a nifty drain plug, it's worth draining it just to see what's in it and how much is left. Of course, my camera doesn't film when I first dropped the transmission fluid, but anyway, took the bolt out. Transmission fluid came out. I don't see any water. I don't see any multicolored stuff or gunk or anything like that. Like when water interacts with oil for any period of time. So uh, the plan is to drain this, check it, and then refill it and just make sure that we're good before we hook up 
the engine to the torque converter. That's the plan. One thing that we can do in order to make this car look a little bit better is I put all the stuff back on it that was taken off. I, I'm glad the guy took it off because it might have saved it. I doubt anybody stole anything off of this car, but at the same time, it doesn't look that great. So these are the, they're called egg crates, and they came on the 70 to 72 Corvettes. They go in here. Um, basically, you have one stud on the bottom and two screws on the top. And you can see all the original blue this car used to be. That's how those fit in, just like that. And I feel like the car looks a whole bunch better when you have these stuck in. They're kind of a pain to do, but what I'm going to do is put this nut on the bottom first. So these rocker panels are held on by machine thread screws, which here's a perfect example. Most people don't know that, so they put a regular coarse thread screw in and they ruin. There's three wells in the middle under the door that will take a normal screw, or they'll take that machine screw. So I'm able to put these on with whatever I can. Um, there are one, two, three screws on the front and the back that need to have a nut on them or a, at least a, a U-clip in order to hold them together because there's nothing, there's no well for them to go into like there are over here. These actually attach to the bird cage. These just attach to um, the, I guess, the fender fiberglass itself. So that's how those go. So it looks like on the earlier cars, I don't recognize this on the newer ones, but there's actually a screw down here that holds that in. How nice. But, this rocker panel is looking much nicer than not having it. It covers up all that messed up paint on the frame and some of the surface rust, but it looks really good. Let's see what other parts we can put on. We could probably put on those and that, but I'm looking for exterior parts mostly. I'm kind of waiting on the um, on the inside for a little bit. But look at these. I'm gonna put these in. And we can also Also put these trim rings on. We're gonna have to get new tires, but at least the trim rings can be on and not in a bucket. Here are the bumper supports for the front. We'll put those on too. We'll probably not use that uh, piece of bailing wire, but yeah, let's put some grills on. It'll really look like a '72. All right, we're gonna start with these bumperettes. I guess is what you call them. So basically, they sit up in the car like this, one bolt goes, basically they sit up in the car like this, one bolt goes here, one bolt goes in that bracket up on the bumper. Uh, I might have these backwards, but anyway, that's how they sit, and then the grills, I, and they might be like this, because they, they continue on with the grill, it goes over like that. Why he took these off, I have no idea, but I mean, they should go on fairly easily. 
I'll lube up the, the threads and the bolts. And obviously these are not the nicest ones, but you know they're better than they're better than a big hole. finished result so they cleaned up pretty good I mean their driver quality but the crazy part about these grills is is that one side new is $700 so if you bought this one and this one you're spending 1400 bucks now the crazy part about that is the last set of these I had it was a look just like this center grill and then another one that looked just like this used they're about a thousand bucks a pair and the problem you have is very few people part out chrome bumper Corvettes because they're worth more together than they are apart. So I'm very happy that he, he kept these and he held on to them. The center grill, I've seen people move it out so it kind of lines up with the front, but that's how, factory, that's how they did it basically. It was a filler. Um, if you didn't run a front license plate in Texas, you don't have to if your car is registered an antique, but. Doesn't that look just way better than an open hole? It makes it look more like a real car.